Oh, that's nice. So, have you seen with Fast Forward this year, we're doing something a little more different. We're doing something different with these six-minute insights, and I'm certainly doing something different with my presentation today. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to make myself comfortable, I'm going to tell you some personal stories that up until now only a few of my friends have ever known about, well, and last week about 250 people in Vancouver. So, um, it would be, you see, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, in my career, so I think it'd be naive to think that I could come here and give you marketing tips that somehow transform your business today. But uh, I've learned through a lot of personal pain two things. One, to ignore my bias, leave it behind when making decisions, and two, surround myself with unicorns. So people whose talents perform the impossible and who break the perceived limits of my world or our world, and I'm going to go through that today. So here's my first lesson. Back in the 90s, I used to own a club that catered to punk and indie culture. It was a time where alternative music was making its way into the mainstream. I hired people who fit the mold and shared our customers' subversive values and their disdain for commercialism. It was a really unique formula for business to say the least, and for several years, business was really, really good until this happened. So I was instantly gutted when the definition of cool changed. So uh, the bar scene was being rave, uh, replaced with raves, ecstasy, $10 bottles of water. I think some of you will remember this. Punk and rock music were replaced with electronica. You know, I was completely shocked when my most loyal, like hardcore punk rock customers had abandoned their values to be a part of this. So grown adults with pacifiers in their mouths. I was blindsided and my business fell into a pit that took forever to climb out of. A very painful lesson, bias will screw you over. Whether you built your business on a niche market, uh, ignored cultural changes, or resisted new technology, because, well, you have an established business and things are going great, so why bother? Ignoring our customers will come back and bite us hard because their preferences and uh, societal norms change constantly. Here's another example. So in my 20s, I was prescribed a nasal spray for my sinusitis. Soon into the treatment, I would get very mild nosebleeds, a drop or two, and then it would stop. So uh, one day, driving to a first date, the bleeding started again, except this time wouldn't stop. By the time I arrived to my date's house, my face was covered in blood. The front of my shirt had become shiny, wet, tomato red. Stepping out of the car, uh, her neighbors, random pedestrians, and what to me seemed like sea people, froze in horror until my date came running around screaming, oh my God, and called 911. In the pursuit of an ambulance ride and at the hospital, my repeated concerns about the nasal spray were being dismissed by it. It's just a nosebleed. Until the second outburst. Blood was streaming through my fingers, it was coagulating my throat as I struggled to breathe. I could see the hospital staff getting really nervous um, because they couldn't make it stop. I was finally injected with something and I passed out. Coming to, I actually thought I was dead and mistook the nurse for an angel who looked like Claire Danes, <laughs> bathed in light. So uh, I was snapped out of it when she told me that I'd had a seizure. So lowered onto a gurney and rushed through a crowded hallway. They uh, ripped open my shirt, stuck sensors all over me. And then they tried to pull off my pants. I resisted, of course. Why are they taking off my pants? It's just a nosebleed. <laughs> Finally, a doctor came and broke it up. So telling everyone, look, it wasn't a seizure, that my reaction was quite common to that type of injection. I'd realized at that moment that when I passed out, I'd actually peed myself. That's why they're trying to get my pants off. So there's a very painful, another painful lesson in all of this, you know, a much longer version of the story. Uh, they actually finally cauterized my nose and the bleeding stopped. In total, I lost three pints of blood, a third of what's in our, in our bodies, and I didn't get a second date. So the longer version of the story is that, um, well, there is a longer version of the story, but the lesson is that we um, need to listen to our customers when they're at their worst and not ignore them. So sometimes they have the solution and they can uh, get to the root of the issue a lot quicker than we can. In my case, uh, the doctors, uh, the solution for them was right under their noses, or mine as a bled. But their bias will refuse to allow them to accept the fact that I could have understood the root of the issue because I didn't have the medical training. Let's go back to this. So we are the sum average of our friends and colleagues. The people that we surround ourselves with have the biggest influence in our lives, our successes, and our careers. Whether we want to accept this fact or not, we are the sum average of their talents and their capabilities, their influences and their preferences. 
These guys here, they helped my business for a while. They are amazing people. I was loyal to them. They're my team. But their beliefs did not make them adaptable to change. And their biases influenced my thinking, so I was resistant to the changes that are happening around me, and my business suffered because of it. Here's a more tangible ex example. For you that remember Blockbuster, ages ago, Netflix came to them and offered to sell their business for $50 million. But they refused. They didn't have the vision to see where online video was going. So you see, Blockbuster stacked their leadership team with some average bias that was completely resistant to change and the business suffered because of it, and they're no longer around today. But Netflix is, why? Netflix surrounded themselves with talents and capabilities that Blockbuster just didn't have or couldn't even dream of. Untethered by like rules and legacy and convention, they changed and shaped the way we consume movies and television. And now they're worth $150 billion. I think that we can actually do the same in our industry. I think that we can make the impossible happen. And if you don't believe that we can, Here's my final lesson. This is Booster. I like to call this photo Cat Jesus. My partner Ning has had him since she was a kitten. She loves him more than anything else in the world, myself included. This photo was taken just before we had discovered that he had cancer and was given a week to live. Chemotherapy was available, but the pet oncologist recommended euthanasia because he was too far gone. This is his x-ray at the time. Normally, you'd see his heart and his organs quite clearly, but you can see that they're clouded. There's a mass in his chest, there's fibers and fluids filling his lungs uh, and clouding his organs as he struggled to breathe. My partner, Ning, was not ready to let him go, so I began researching home, uh, miracle cures that were uh, accessible and uh, natural and evidence-based, at the same time debunking homeopathic remedy myths. As part of his uh, 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 or as part of his uh, palliative care program, our vet had prescribed steroids that we used to co complement a natural cocktail that we had developed based on our extensive research findings. So this is actually it. We were feeding him this. So Booster would go on to live uh, past his expiry date of a week. He would live a few weeks more, and then this happened. This x-ray was taken four weeks after the last one you saw. You can now see his heart and internal organs quite clearly. Um, the uh, mass in his chest have all but disappeared. Our vet, who had no idea that we'd developed this natural uh, cocktail, this alternative treatment called his recovery a miracle, then we told her about the cocktail, and then she asked me if I worked in a lab. I said, no, I'm in marketing. So Booster would go on to live for many years, eventually passing away at the age of 17 naturally. You see, uh, the lesson here is that I had no bias. I had no medical training to say what I was trying to do was impossible. I just had the naive determination to find a solution. So you see, chemotherapy would have cost us $20,000 and extend his life for two months, maybe, we were told. We extend his life for years on $200. You see, I have, as I told you before, I found that the natural limitation or the perceived limitations of worlds can be and are broken every day by ordinary people like you and me. I titled this talk, Cage the Unicorn, because since those early club days, the things I've learned to do is surround myself with people who are different than me, who have taught me to think differently and without limitations. So I'd say to you, go out and find your unicorns. You hold them tight and don't let them go, because they'll transform you, they'll transform the way you think, and you'll make the impossible happen. These here are my unicorns, and they made today possible, and I thank them for it, and I thank you for being here today. Thank you.